Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're going to be making a spiced chocolate cutout cookie and I have these really cute Halloween cookie cutters to use to cut them out. And uh, I haven't tried this recipe yet but I was very intrigued by the ingredient list. You add molasses into these cookies as well as no white sugar, but dark brown sugar. So I'm hoping that they kind of turn out to be almost like a chocolate spiced gingerbread cookie because gingerbread is one of my favorite styles of cookie. So I'm excited to get making these and decorating them with you. So let's get going. You guys gave me a lot of amazing tips on my cake baking video and one of them was to make sure to sift the dry ingredients. This was especially helpful with the whole grain flour I added, but also with the cocoa powder and the regular flour as well. The whole dry mixture just ended up so much airier and easier to whisk together. So we're combining two and a half cups of flour. I used two cups of regular unbleached flour and a half a cup of whole wheat flour and then half a teaspoon each of cardamom, cinnamon, fine sea salt, baking soda, baking powder, and finally a half a cup of dark chocolate powder. So now that we've combined all those dry ingredients together really well, it's time to cream together the butter and the sugar. So I've left the butter out to soften and it's pretty well softened. Still a little bit cold, which is good. I didn't want it to get too warm. And we're going to add them into the mixer here with the sugar. This recipe calls for dark brown sugar, which has a much richer molasses content. So we're adding three fourths cups of the dark brown sugar to one and a half sticks of butter and beating it until it has a nice, smooth, well combined texture. And then we're going to add one egg and even more molasses to this combination. A half a cup of unsulfured grandma's molasses. Instead of beating the molasses, I'm just mixing it in until it's combined before we start adding the dry mixture. One spoonful at a time. 
I've learned that it's important to beat in the dry ingredients until they're just combined. That way you end up with a really nice light dough. Okay, so the dough has been uh, in the fridge for about 20 minutes, and now we're going to roll it out. Have a couple of sheets of parchment paper, and I'm going to sandwich the discs in between the parchment paper and roll them through there so that there's no sticking, hopefully. Rolling this dough in between parchment sheets is a very important step, so don't skip this one. So, at this point, the dough has been chilling for an hour, and it feels pretty solid, so let's start cutting out our cookies. I have a bat shape, a cat, a witch hat, and a coffin. So, I'm only going to start with the one. The other one's still in the fridge, staying cold, and once I cookie cut out this one, I'll take that one out and do that one. Now, this is where I ran into a little bit of a roadblock. This dough became sticky and hard to work with very quickly. Wasting time, letting the dough warm up even slightly results in the dough that doesn't want to cooperate at all. I ended up balling up this first batch, rolling it out again, and putting it back in the fridge. For my second attempt, I flipped the dough onto the rolling board, uh, sprinkled with regular cocoa powder, and worked very quickly to cut out the shapes. This worked out so much better. I would even recommend separating the dough into four parts because even after cutting out four cutout shapes, the dough was becoming sticky again already. After cutting out the shapes, I put the baking sheet in the fridge for 10 minutes or so. That way, the dough didn't spread too much in the oven once it was baked. Preheat the oven to 325, not the 375 I had initially. I had a couple crispy cat legs and bad wings at 375. I really love these cookie cutter shapes. They all turned out very cute and durable after cooling off for a bit.
Now that the cookies are cooling down, we can get started on making the royal icing. For the royal icing, I used a recipe which called for meringue powder. I combined four cups of sifted powdered sugar with three tablespoons of meringue powder and nine tablespoons of water. After that, I separated the icing into three bowls to add some food coloring. I was experimenting a little bit with this plant-based food coloring. Unfortunately, I can't really recommend it for this purpose. In order to get any sort of color payoff, you have to add a lot of drops, which ended up actually watering down the colored icing to more of a flooding consistency. Sadly, this made the colored icing very difficult to work with. If I would have known, I could have added less water to the original icing to compensate. I am a total beginner at any sort of decorating, so I decided to stick with a couple of simple designs. I saw a few of these skeleton cats on Google Images, and I love the idea. And same idea with the coffin. It's funny, I thought the coffin might be the most boring shape out of all the cookies, but it turned out to be my favorite to decorate because of the possibilities of a, a blank coffin. One tip I realized is when making a straight line with your royal icing, pull the icing towards yourself It'll be a lot easier to control than if you move the icing away from you.
Well, as you can see, the cookies are all done and decorated. I did try a couple of the um, unfrosted ones and they are very tasty. Not too chocolatey, uh, and they really do have that gingerbread, dark gingerbread flavor. I'm really happy how they turned out, and thank you for joining me for this adventure.